Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Leaders Credit Union. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I introduce today's very special guest, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So we are opening our greenhouses uh, this the month of September here at Discovery Park, and I discovered that our education department has 129 variety of seeds, about 20,000 in total seeds, but some stuff I haven't even heard of. Like that a, is crazy. An orange jazz tomato. Hadn't heard of that before. <laughs> I cannot wait until we get this thing up and running. I am, uh, I would not like to brag, but some people say I have a green thumb. And so <laughs> I'm, I have been spending, you know, this is the time now is in the fall. And so it's beginning to be closer to the fall mm. so we can put stuff in the ground and let it get a little bit rooted before the winter time comes. Do you plant stuff? I do not. I've, well, now that you're here and you're actually, your desk is in there with the education oh yeah, folks I'm, who I'm are working on this. So snag me a few seeds. I appreciate that. I and actually last year I cut a bunch of the heads off of the zinnias that we had growing out back in the pollinator garden. And I took them home in the spring, planted them in the ground. And I have a huge uh, uh, zinnia patch wow. that I'll bring you some seeds so you can plant those. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, our guest today is Dr. Yancey Freeman, the new chancellor of UT Martin. Welcome, Dr. Freeman. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you today. It is a real honor to have an opportunity to sit and talk with you. Well, so let's back all the way up. A lot of folks might not might not know you from around here exactly. So tell us a little bit about where you where you were born. Where did you grow up? So I am originally from West Tennessee. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and so I will say, just starting out, it's great to be back in West Tennessee. It feels like home. It is definitely home for me. Always uh, has been. West Tennessee has always been near and dear to my heart. So I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, graduated from high school. I was going to give you the year, but I think I may hold out on uh, giving well, the year us, I graduated from high Give school. us the neighborhood for our Memphians that are listening. What, okay, what 1987. I'll, I'll go ahead and I graduated from Memphis Central High School in 1987. Oh, that's uh, nice. And, and what, what, uh, what elementary school and what neighborhood are you from? So I grew up in Orange Mound, uh, mm -hmm. a community in Memphis that is, it's a historic community in Memphis. It's been around a really, really long time. I went to school out of district. So the, the district school for where I live was Melrose High School, but I ended up going to Central High School. It was a, a college prep school. I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. And that was a pathway. So my mom was setting me up for the best pathway to be able to go to college. And so that's what, you know, that's what I did. Now, my uh, two daughters went to Snowden. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. And, yep. No snow oldest, very well. My oldest went to Central for a little while before we moved away to, to D.C. But uh, yeah, I'm a Memphian and a Midtown. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. I was a Bellevue Bobcat. So I know oh, yeah. part of Central came from Snowden. The other part came from Bellevue uh, Junior High School. We called it Junior High School then. I'm yeah. aging myself, I know. But uh, uh, back then it was Bellevue Junior High School. So so, yeah, I am a native Memphian and. Uh, Mary, my wife, is a native Memphian. We went to high school together as well. So we both are just back in our stomping grounds to be back in West Tennessee. Well, I, I, looked, I, I looked on Facebook um, a little bit before we talked, and you're like me. You definitely married up. Your wife's very yes. beautiful. And, Thank you. And I understand she's a nurse, and she yes. also went to UT Martin. She did. She is a UTM proud uh, UTM alum. Uh, she says I'm a pacer, uh, so I'm trying to get her to be a Skyhawk uh, because that, we're Skyhawks. But uh, she says I'm a proud UTM uh, pacer and graduated in 1993 from UTM and, and uh, is a very, very proud alum. 
Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, back us up a little bit and talk to us about when you were in high school, what was your vision for what you wanted to do with your life? Oh, my goodness. So, of course, it's an evolution of of uh, time, you know, uh, in terms of career trajectory and what I wanted to do. Believe it or not, I, I thought when I was in high school, I was going to end up going into law and then politics. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, uh, but, you know, at that point, I thought, oh, this is such a great career. I would love to do law and practice for a while and then perhaps, you know, go into politics. And I think much of it was I've always had this spirit of wanting to help people and I love being around people. It gives me energy to, you know, to help and to be around people. So I knew I wanted to do something in the helping profession, if that makes sense. Uh, And so that's what I thought I was going to do. I ended up enrolling after high school, enrolling at the Chattanooga campus, the UT Chattanooga campus. So I went clear across the other side of the state uh, to East Tennessee and enrolled in undergrad, went to school there. Uh, Going through undergrad, I I thought, oh, I'm going to study engineering. So, you know, students change their majors three times uh, while they're in undergrad. It's probably five times average now, uh, you know, with the students we have going through uh, uh, college now. But so I started in engineering and thought, no, that's not what I want to do and ended up in political science. So I have a a bachelor's degree in political science. Public administration uh, was the concentration there. And Scott, I'll tell you, once I got into public admin, I loved it. I mean, it just reemphasized this helping uh, profession, wanting to be in a situation where I could do good for the public. Uh, So the public good came screaming through on public administration. So I got into that program and absolutely love it. My, My grades started going up. I started feeling really good about myself. And so finished that undergraduate degree there and uh, started when I finished the undergrad degree, I was an active student at UTC. Uh, I started to uh, recruit for the institution. So my first professional job was as a admissions counselor, a recruiter for, for UTC. And coincidentally, I was recruiting in West Tennessee. So I was talking to students on the Western side of the state about coming to school uh, at UTC. So my uh, landmarks now are high school. That's where I know and how I know where I'm going is if you can tell me what high school is near, I can almost tell you what's around it, uh, you know, throughout West Tennessee. Uh, and so uh, so that's been my history. And I've done higher ed since then. And I, I couldn't imagine doing anything different than higher ed. And I'm honored uh, to be at UTM and to be working with this uh, just absolutely talented group of uh, faculty and staff as we serve students to help them meet their goals. Yeah. So what um, you mentioned that um, students change their majors a lot now, like you yeah. did. I started off as a uh, art major, like fine oh. art. I was a sculptor for about yes. 15, 15 seconds. And then <laughs> I switched over to business, which is sort of the catch all. This is at University of Memphis. And then yes. switched over to journalism with a concentration in advertising, which when I hit that sweet spot, it's as you mentioned, you know, your grades went up. I mean, I yep. really once you once it clicks, right. you know, that really helps. Um, yep. What about you, Zach? What did you what was your major path? Started out with pre-physical therapy uh, oh. and then <clears throat> got to the chemistry classes and mm. decided to go a different <laughs> route. <laughs> And uh, at, went with advertising and marketing, and that's that's where I knew I was meant to be. Same so. thing, yeah. It's funny how that happens. So, what about you know back in the day uh, when I wanted to change my major? It was a huge hassle. I had to stand in. First of all, registration was a nightmare. You had to stand yeah. in lines for hours at a time with little computer cards, and uh, if you wanted to change your major, you had to go talk to about eight different people. All and- right, Scott, you're aging yourself. You better watch it now. <laughs> That's right. That's, and the computer cards had a little, uh, you know, little clicks taken out of them. So wh- how's that? And how does that change now? Do, do, oh, is, my goodness. Is it it's like the click of, of a button in a lot of ways in order to be able to do it. Now, we always want to students can do everything now from the computer. You know, we have a software that allows them to go in, see their grades, 
uh, know where they are and how they're doing throughout the entire term, uh, register for classes, pay fees, everything now, of course, can be done uh, on the computer. And so it is so incredibly simple now. Uh, the thing about changing your major, too, is that's part of what you do in undergraduate, right? I mean, it, as a as a college student, it's about discovery and finding your place. And, you know, and so that's why I love this world, because you get people who come in thinking that they're going to do one thing and they end up in a completely different uh, place. All three of us have a different story about how we ended up where we, you know, wanted to go in terms of career. And so the discovery part of it is the most exciting piece. So I don't get really nervous or anxious when students say, hey, I think I want to do X. That's wonderful. That's exactly, you know, we ought to chase that dream as much as we can. But we want to keep them on track, right? We want to keep them on track to graduate. It's important to us that students finish in four years. And so we do quite a bit of counseling with them as they kind of think about gosh, what do I want to do? So we try to set them up in the right major to begin with. And then if they need to change, it's okay because you run into chemistry or whatever it might be. You know, it's okay to transition and change. But we want to counsel with them to say, okay, if you switch here, this is what it means in terms of courses that you'll need to do. This is the pathway that you would take. You know, here are the career opportunities for you as you go so that they're making educated decisions about switching. Uh, versus kind of just jumping and switching and not knowing uh, what will happen as a result of the switch. And there could be potentially some adults who are listening right now. Oh, who absolutely. Are yeah. Unhappy with the direction of their career at the moment and wanting to go back and and get a degree you, over at UT Martin. There's a lot of adult students as well. Yeah, about 10 percent of our population are adult learners. We have, most folks may or may not know this, but we have five regional centers that are located in um, other communities, other counties in Northwest Tennessee. So there are five of them uh, strategically located. And that's where we get a lot of our adult population uh, who come back and they want to, you know, own skills that they may have learned. They want to do a completely different career path. And so they can come to one of those regional centers and, get a degree, you know, from UTM at one of those regional centers. So you don't necessarily even have to come to the campus in Martin to get a Martin degree. Uh, and we're doing so much now. Uh, when I was in school, this was certainly not the case, but we're doing so much now online. Uh, all of our master's degree programs are online. So it is extremely convenient to be able to get a degree from UTM uh, and not even, in some cases, not even have to leave the comfort of your own home because you can do it online. Let's back up again just a minute. I know you were at UT Chattanooga for more than 25 years, right? Yes, 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 I was. So your last gig there was vice chancellor and you were in enrollment management and student affairs, correct? That's right. Yeah, so, that's right. So tell us a little bit about that job because, you know, like I don't, I, I'm not in the university world at all. And so right. I never have been. And so it's fascinating to me the different things that people do there. What, what did you do in that job? So I, I, I'll, and I'll go back a little bit further. I started as an admissions recruiter. So my background has been enrollment, admissions, enrollment, getting students to uh, consider first going to college and then. If I could get them there, consider coming to UTC was, you know, part of the goal I had uh, when I started that job. And I never met a challenge or an opportunity I wasn't willing to take on. So I'm the kind of person that says, oh, we need to do X. I would say, choose me. I'm, you know, I'm the person. I'm, I would be happy to do it. And that's paid off, paid dividends for me throughout my career, because every time I've, you know, changed or switched or have been promoted through uh, to another position, it's been because of my willingness and now the knowledge that I've gained from doing something that I didn't have to do that was not necessarily in my job description description at the time, you know, doing it and actively doing it and loving the job. But it, it came from my love of sort of the profession. So the last job was uh, probably, I'm going to probably not count well, maybe the fifth promotion I had received at UTC through the evolution of, of being at the university. And it was a cabinet level position, uh, vice chancellor for enrollment management, student affairs, what you said. And the, the crusp of it, the, 
was that it was all of the stuff outside of the the class uh, classroom. So I didn't have per se faculty in the division that I worked in, but everything that happened outside of the classroom. So of course, all of the enrollment related things, admissions, financial aid, um, you know, career services, advising, all of those things that would help students acclimate and get enrolled and be successful on the campus was in the division. So that's the enrollment management side. The student affairs side tended to be more like student conduct, student health, uh, housing. We had uh, at UTC, there were almost 3,600 beds uh, that were available to students. And so a large number of beds on campus. Uh, so housing was part of that. Um, counseling, you know, student counseling was part of it. So almost anything that a student encountered out of the classroom reported in the division that I was responsible for. The stuff in the classroom was done with the provost and chief academic officer, and we were tied at the hip. I mean, we were uh, best of friends personally, but great partners uh, professionally as we talked about how we help students to be successful on the campus. Uh, that position, I think, set me up beautifully, you know, to come here uh, and to do some of the same work, do some of the same things that I was able to to do uh, at the Chattanooga campus to bring some of that knowledge and expertise here. So the other thing that happens in the university world, which doesn't happen in the nonprofit world or the corporate world, is that when you get a, a hankering to go work somewhere else, like you guys don't even hide it. Like you, 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 you have like huge meetings and they put it in yeah. the newspaper. And yeah. so, yeah. so talk to us a little <laughs> bit about when you first heard about um, UT Martin, the, the potential for, you know, a job there and, yeah. and what was the thought process behind that and how did that go? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. The higher ed interview process is grueling. I mean, I'm telling you, it is something to behold and unlike a uh, sort of corporate and nonprofit uh, agencies that are there, you hit it right on the hit the nail on the head uh, in that regard. So uh, this process, the process for UT Martin Chancellor went really quickly, believe it or not. It was uh, about a four or five month process, which is really fast for higher ed. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the process is very public, but it doesn't become public until you get to the end of the process. So um, they, Chancellor Carver, who was here, Keith Carver, I know you guys probably know Keith. Keith Carver was here, had been here for six years. Uh, he stepped away and went to literally, I think, help the system office. There was a vacancy uh, with the uh, UT uh, Ag Institute, UTIA uh, Ag Institute. So he went to go be the senior vice president, uh, senior vice chancellor there, uh, leading the Ag Institute. And so it left a vacancy at the Martin campus. I was really surprised because Keith was doing a magnificent job here and didn't think that the position would become available. I've been with the UT system for almost all of my career. Uh, and so I thought, gosh, this is a great opportunity for me and a great opportunity to be able to continue to serve the citizens of Tennessee, to continue to work within the UT system that I knew very, very well. Uh, and also to continue to help students uh, and work with what I consider to be a, a great campus, a phenomenal campus that was doing some innovative stuff. So I heard about the position, heard that it was open. I um, started then working on my resume. So I'd not had to do a resume in years because I was a known commodity in Chattanooga. And so that felt like doing a dissertation again, if, uh, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so I started working on it, getting it together so that I could submit it before uh, the deadline date, before they, the com committee started reviewing applications. Typically with higher ed, there is a large contingency of people, a large committee of folks. And so there were probably 15 people, maybe even 20 people on the committee from the university and the community here who served on the search committee, looking through applications, that kind of thing. And for, uh, for a chancellor position, for a CEO position for a campus, you know, you have all of these different entities, stakeholders that are interested in what's going to happen. And so it makes it an even wider net, a bigger, you know, sort of review of what happens. 
so I put my name into the hat and, um, you know, did the did the the CV, did the resume, submitted the information, submitted the cover letter. And I said, OK, here goes nothing. They'll never select me for, you know, for the job. Uh, lo and behold, about a week after I submitted it, the committee was already reviewing. I got a call from the committee chair who said, hey, we would like you've made the, the you know, top 11 candidates. We'd like to have you in for Zoom. Uh, would you be interested in coming in for a Zoom meeting? And I said, of course I would. I would absolutely love to do it. I did the Zoom committee, you know, did the Zoom meeting with the committee. And of course, the first thing you start thinking after the call is over is, gosh, I wish I had said this. I wish I had done this. I wish I had told them this. I don't think I was clear enough here. Uh, and so I told my wife, I said, oh, they'll never call me. I, you know, I think I bombed it. <laughs> and then they called and they said, oh, my goodness, this was almost um, I don't know where I was in the you know 11 people. But they called almost a couple of days later and said, oh, you made it to the top three. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that's crazy. And so, at, that point, uh, at that point, is it still secret? Like they have it is. It, okay. It's a secret through the Zoom interview process. And so it's very secret up to that point. They don't release any names or let anybody know because at your, you know, many folks, especially for this kind of, of a, a position, you have sort of a history of of experience. So you don't want to jeopardize. Uh, we're, you know, the current institution, we're getting folks now from out of private industry who are coming into this sort of seat as well. And so you don't want to jeopardize that job if you have not. But at the point that you become top three, then it becomes really, really public. Right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. at that point, uh, they posted the top, the top three candidates out there so that everyone could see. I was fortunate that I worked for someone, the chancellor at the UTC campus. I had already mentioned to him that this was my ultimate goal before I even knew that the job was open. He was mentoring me and giving, trying to give me experience uh, of things that I would need to do and know as a, you know, president chancellor on a campus. And so I told him that the position was open and he was incredibly supportive. I mean, so much so that when he found out, he said, oh my gosh, you have to put me as a reference for you. Um, you know, for the position. And so uh, I did and that's, that. And, and that's and, what that's what we do here at Discovery Park. You yeah. know, as you'll discover, almost all of our senior leaders here at Discovery Park are UT Martin graduates. And yeah. we have a lot of interns here and we work very closely with the university in a lot of ways. But when somebody on our team wants to go work somewhere else like we support that wholeheartedly we do not intend for all of us to work for eternity here together right. at discovery yeah. <laughs> park and so you know we really lift each other up and promote each other and encourage if you know if you have learned all you can learn here and and served all you can serve then it's it's likely meant you know, yeah, to move on yeah. to the next thing, but not everybody is as uh, a, a progressive in their thinking as right. we are when it comes to that. So I know for some folks, it's a little bit of a pause before they let their uh, boss or their team know that they're about to be in the newspaper looking for a yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some horror stories from folks who have been there, and you know, the good thing about it is, if you have people who are working for you, and other companies want them, and other companies are are recruiting them. That means they're great employees. I mean, who wants to have an employee that nobody else wants to hire? So <laughs> right. that's kind of the way I think about it. Uh, that may be backwards, but that's kind of the way I think about it, too. So. Zach, that does not apply to you. You are, <laughs> yes, that's you, right. <laughs> you are not allowed to leave at least into at least for another five years. OK, I, I like it here. So, OK, good. 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 I, yeah, Zach, Zach's relatively new. Well, I mean, very new, actually. What is this your second month? Uh, approaching three. Approaching three months, and he's doing an incredible job. So uh, we love having him here. Appreciate um, that. We're going to take a real quick break, and when we get back, I want to ask you about the first ninety days okay. of, of your gig there at UT okay. Martin. Awesome. With nine branches in West Tennessee and nationwide ATM and branch access, you can take leaders with you wherever you go. From checking accounts, credit cards, home loans, and their state-of-the-art mobile app, Banking with Leaders can help you move forward. Learn more and see how you can qualify for membership at leaderscu.com. 
I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is Dr. Yancey Freeman. So before we left, we were, I mentioned we were going to talk about the first, your first 90 days. Any of my friends who leave to go to new jobs or anybody from here, I always recommend they get the book, The First 90 Days by Michael D. Watkins. So anybody who's starting something new, when I came, when I went to my last job, I used it. When I came here, I used it. It's really a great book. Um, for those, Folks out there listening, Dr. Freeman, who maybe want to have a chancellor job, you know, in their future. Tell us a little bit about how you approach being new. What what do you try to accomplish in the first 90 days of a job as chancellor? Yeah, I have um, I have done uh, over the past uh, few weeks. So this is this I'm rounding out a month on September 8th. It will be a full month of, of being here. Uh, and so I'm into the first, you know, four weeks of of being here. And part of I've outlined six for six in terms of six things that I want to accomplish over the six months. And nothing is to completion because there's always there are going to always be ways to improve on what we're doing. Um, the major thing that I've promised to this community, though, is that I would do a lot of listening. Uh, I, I've said to them, listening comes before leadership. And I need to make sure, make certain that I understand this community. I understand how things are, uh, have been done. Uh, There will be things that I will tweak just a little bit that, you know, uh, that become a part of preference for me in terms of how we do business and uh, what's out there. But no sort of major, major, major shifts in, uh, in operations and what we do, at least not here initially until I can get a good breadth and depth understanding of what's happening on campus. And so I've been doing a lot of listening. I've been meeting with a lot of internal folks on campus, including our academic deans, all of the major divisions. I've been meeting with their leadership team, as well as the vice chancellor for those major divisions across campus. Uh, I've been meeting with state legislators, uh, with uh, some of our national legislators in Um, You know, on this side of the state, I've been meeting and talking with them about uh, needs as I see them for UTM, as well as uh, what they want, what they see and what they view as uh, as strong points for the campus. And so I've been doing just quite a bit of, you know, talking and meeting and listening uh, to folks about what they think about the campus. Uh, There are some things. I Oh, go ahead, Scott. No, no, no. I was, uh, I mean, you and I have not been necessarily in the same, um, yep. uh, areas and I, and I haven't, you know, we didn't know each other before, but literally I have seen you on my feeds, um, in the news. <laughs> I mean, you are really making an impact with these, you know, with your first, it's only been your first 30 days, but you know, as far as your meetings and, you know, so it's bled over into my feeds and on social media. And I do know that you have a very strong social media team there at UT Martin. Emma is over there. And, yes. And yes. Doing some absolutely. Great work. She used to work here, by the way. So, oh, okay, uh, yeah. You're going to find that we we pass uh, team members back and forth between the two <laughs> organizations, um, which is great to me. It makes us even stronger. But I just wanted you to know that you're really making an impact already, uh, just yes. with all the awareness of the meetings. Oh my goodness, thank you. I am uh, I am trying to meet as many people as I can, uh, stakeholders in this community, so that really I learn as much as I can about Martin, and then. It arms me to be able to talk about some some of the innovative, entrepreneurial, uh, transformational stuff that's happening on campus. If, if I can talk with folks about what's happening and what you know what we're doing, I can translate that when I'm talking to some of these key folks, uh, whether it be donors to prospective students. Uh, about what we're doing and why they want to be a part of this community. So I I am enjoying it. Um, I'm silly at heart. And so I like to have fun. You probably have seen some of that in the social media stuff uh, that we've been posting out there. But it, it, there are ways for folks to get to know me uh, and to introduce me to the community and to say that I am open. We are open. We want to hear what folks think about the, the campus and their experience so that we can continue to improve. 
Um, and, and I will just sort of as an aside, I will say I met one of your employees last time I was uh, out at Discovery Park, Christina Mills, who is an awesome, awesome student. Uh, she is, she was just commissioned in uh, for ROTC, for the Army, first African-American uh, woman commissioned any UT campus, um, you know, happened right here at UT Martin. I saw her at Discovery Park. I didn't know who she was. She came up to me uh, just very boldly and said, you know, I'm Christina Mills. I'm going to be commissioned next week. I know you're going to be there. Uh, I am just thrilled to have her as a student. I know you have to be thrilled to have her as an employee uh, because she is absolutely impressive. So I'm sorry, that was an aside, but yeah. No, I'm so glad Christina. you did. Yeah, no, she's great. Her speech was amazing. Yes. Um, she is uh, She is indicative of the type of folks that that uh, we have here and at UT Martin, you know, that are involved in both organizations. So thank you for shouting her out. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, so yeah, so I am uh, doing a lot of listening and starting to unravel some of the, the gaps and sticking points for the campus, things about, you know, capital projects and how we get, uh, you know, buildings off the ground, uh, meeting with a lot of, of donors, meeting with academic departments. And so I'm, I'm making my rounds. So what what do you think? There, I'm sure there's people listening who are starting new jobs and uh, some may be new in leadership. What do you think is the biggest threat to success for a new leader like yourself? Yeah, I think um, I think it is really coming in, sort of just changing everything without an understanding of what's happening and what's going on. And uh, I, I, to me, I think that's a huge threat uh, for um, the continuity of the institution and what happens at the institution. I think folks are already anxious and nervous enough about getting a new leader in. Uh, but if you come in sort of with the the ax mentality uh, where you're going to change everything immediately, uh, it does not in any way, in, you know, endear continuity, does not in any way endear um, you know, comfort and ability for folks to to learn the new leader, learn about new styles, that kind of thing. I, I will say that the things even that we've changed so far, that we've adjusted a little a little bit so far, uh, folks have been extremely receptive to it. I mean, they they really see it as, oh, this is a different set of eyes looking at it. It's great to get a different perspective. And yeah, we can certainly consider this or change it or you know, here are the obstacles to, to changing whatever the topic or, or thing might be. Here are the obstacles to being able to do it. So having those discussions have come naturally for us uh, and folks seem to, to be very open to it. Yeah, that's wonderful. So we've talked a lot about uh, academics and business and uh, what do you do for fun? Oh, my goodness. It is. Uh, it's my family. I love hanging out with my family. We are movie buffs. And so we're usually the first one to the theater when a new movie comes out. Um, you know, we we are the first ones to go see uh, a really good movie. And I like uh, action. I like, you know, drama. I like stuff that's not real. And so what I mean by that is I like I'm a big Marvel uh, and DC Comics person, right? So there's not a Marvel movie that's come out that I have not seen. I am a Star Wars fanatic. And so I love going to see, you know, sort of the sci-fi uh, stuff that, that um, you know, that sort of takes you out of reality for a couple of hours. And so that's what we love doing. We are, uh, my wife and I are finding really good places to eat. So we love going to sort of non-chain stuff and you know, finding really good food. And so that's typically what we do. Oh, that's great. Well, it you'll find we have a great movie theater there in Martin. That, yes. uh, that, that's <laughs> where we go see our movies, uh, my wife and I, and a lot of uh, great places to eat. I saw on Facebook where you were just at Blake's Southern yes. uh, Mill. He's, he's an incredible uh, young man. And also that is an incredible restaurant. He, I, uh, we love it. We uh, had an opportunity to meet Blake uh, two times ago when we were there, uh, but it is becoming a place that I am frequenting. So I need to probably slow down just a little bit. 
I know. Anytime I have people come in from out of town, we definitely check out Blake's. Yes. Um, there are a lot of other really uh, fun places to eat and to visit uh, in this whole region. Uh, so I'll send you my list over. All um, right. So you I'll can be check it out. It. Being yeah. in the hospitality business, there are, um, you know, a lot of places um, around here that that uh, folks, when they visit Discovery Park, also, you know, get to eat and, you know, check. have you been to Real Foot Lake yet? No, I haven't. I've heard about it, but we are um, we are going to get up to eat there very soon, hopefully. Yeah, good. There's a couple of places, and and I want to take you to lunch one day, and and I'll share some some uh, tips uh, for places to eat and hang out here in, right. in North, Northwest Tennessee. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're super busy right now, and I really appreciate you taking your time to talk to us today. Thank you. This has been fun. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to your guests and uh, to talk about myself and talk about UTM and the great work that's happening. And thank you for the partnership and everything that Discovery Park does for UTM. Thanks to all of you listeners who have joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. 